Hello, this video is an update for those who are interested in this visual programming language slash coding environment that I've been working on. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Well, uh, I can move my mouse around and hover any of these things that we've got here. I can move my carrot to different lines and you get to see a visualization on the right of what we've got there on that line. Uh, but what actually are these things? Like, it looks like code, and indeed I can write, you know, hello everyone um, there, and it sort of works. Uh, what you see here is kind of turned into, um, it's turned into a visualization on, on the fly. So if I, uh, if I click, if I, uh, We've got a variable here that uh, it's got a purple, orange, and blue border, which means that if I write uh, blue, orange, purple, and press the spacebar, then we get a copy of that variable. Um, uh, and then because this is a this is a free variable, it's sort of the equivalent of writing point equals uh, my point equals point uh, zero zero zero, putting it at the origin. Um, I can, uh, oh, I can, sorry, to be clear, I can at any time rotate everything in the scene uh, using the right mouse button. Um, but then I can also, with this point, I can grab it and move it around. Um, it's not doing anything clever uh, in terms of getting the point to move in three dimensions. It's just uh, moving it in the plane um, that's, you know, parallel to the mouse plane, let's say. Um, but yeah, it puts that there. Uh, we have other variables in here, so this is an arrow. Um, you can move that around, and uh, if yeah, if two things are on the same line, you see it in the same window. Um, whatever one that you hover, so currently I'm hovering the uh, points window, but I can't I can't change the uh, arrow in here. But if I hover the arrows window, I'm looking at the same sort of picture, but now I can manipulate the arrow. Um, on this line though, so we've got three variables. Um, and one of them is the arrow, one of them is this point, um, but this point is being set to point plus arrow, which means that if I uh, change the position of this point, um, it's moved the other point uh, according to where that arrow is facing. And if, I if I'm hovering the arrow, then we'll see that, yeah, it's, it's moved like that. So it's taken this point and it's added this arrow to this point because it's you know, point equals point plus arrow. Um, that's a little bit sloppy, uh, actually, even. <laughs> but uh, so this whole programming environment is based on something called projective geometric algebra. Um, if you have never heard of projective geometric algebra, uh, I envy you tremendously because you can have your mind blown by some videos uh, by a guy called Stephen DeKennick, which I'll point put in the uh, description. Um, it's a new approach to doing geometry in three dimensions. New approach, well, sort of it's been around for a while. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can do things like point plus arrow. Um, you can also, so here, so here, so let's say that we've got, we've got a line, um, which is going through the origin. Oh, I can, uh, change the, change where this line is and I can change what angle it's at as well. Um, we want to do, we want to take this point and we want to project it onto this line. Or in other words, we want to find the, uh, the point on this line that is closest to this point uh, in three dimensions. And that's what, this is what that looks like. So uh, we've got here, um, we've got this point being set to that point projected onto that line. And if I move this point around, uh, you can see that it does work like that and updates perfectly. Um, if I move this line around, uh, yeah, you can see that that's updating correctly as well. Um, this is this uh, here is the dot product. Um, it's doing line dot point uh, and then multiplied by that line again. Um, if you don't see why that would accomplish a projection, Stephen DeKennick will is the person to look at. Um, yeah, projective geometric algebra allows you to do stuff like that. So in this relatively in this you know one line of code, I've done something that would usually take four lines of code. And if you do the same thing with fewer lines of code, then you have got something that'll be less bug prone or at least easier to debug. Um, uh, yeah, so here we've got planes as well. Um, here I'm taking the uh, the meat of two uh, of two planes, um, and if I uh, move this plane around, it sets, um, 
it uh, always makes sure that uh, we've got uh, that line pass being the meat of those two planes. Um, yeah, and if I try to click here and modify anything here, I can't do that because this line is being set to these two planes. I could, I have been thinking about, well, I was think, thinking about something like back solving, like suppose that you wanted to change this line and you wanted to change it in such a way that it is still the meat of those two planes, but when you change the line, it changes one of the planes. Um, yeah, would be an interesting thing to explore. Obviously, most programming languages don't have that kind of thing. I think that Toby Shachman's apparatus uh, has something like that in it. Um, but yeah, uh, the, so these are all uh, points, lines, and planes in three dimensions are primitives that you get out of projective geometric algebra. Um, and that's kind of baked into this programming language in the same way that adding and multiplying is baked into most programming languages. Um, down here, I'm just trying to show that uh, this environment does support other kinds of visualization. So in theory, you can, if you want to make your own kind of pictogram and your own kind of data that comes from that pictogram, you can do it in this, um, similar to uh, Ken Perlin's Chalk Talk. Um, the, none of these are, I would say, very well thought out, but, you know, here we've just got a picture. Um, here we've got, uh, oh, this, this is a, uh, like, ignore the green grid for this one, but this is, uh, just a scalar value between zero and one. Here we've got an angle. Um, and here we've got, uh, so this is a picture of the globe, which is going to be useful later. Um, but uh, with this one, I can just like grab and move the globe around. Um, and obviously, uh, you already have the ability to grab and move everything around. Um, but this is gra this is moving only the globe. Um, yeah. So, oh yeah, and down here, uh, this is this is an array of points um, that I've set to being like between these two been between these two arrows. Um, yeah, arrays. I haven't. I haven't thought that through terribly well. I want to have something that allows you to interpret them as some kind of function from the from the natural numbers to a thing. Um, uh, the the programming languages Cuttle and uh, Dynamic Land have things called spreads, um, and that might be the thing that I need to do. But yeah, okay. So here we've got. Um, uh, th these are other products that you can have in uh, in projective geometric algebra. So this is the join of two points, and because these two points are free points, oh, I need to go over to this one. Um, these are two free points, and so they create this this line. Um, here we have uh, a line, uh, a line, and a plane. And if I, oh, hmm. Yeah, if I if I move this plane around, uh, it's the the point is always set to the intersection of that line and that plane, um, including when they are parallel. Is a nice thing about uh, uh, projective geometric algebra. I'm not sure. I'm not drawing the planes on both sides, unfortunately, so it can temporarily become invisible. Um, so here we have, uh, let's move this up. I actually don't, still don't have a scroll bar. I'll explain why in a moment. Um, uh, so this is a, uh, this is trying to show, well, that you can write a function in this language. Um, I was interested in showing people uh, map projections, so Probably everybody knows about map projections. Some of them are rectangular. Some of them are like globular, like that. Um, uh, this is this is a function that implements stereographic projection. Um, and before I show you its output, uh, let's see how this function works. So we define a new function um, that's taking in one variable, which is a point. Uh, this point is, you know, you can think of it as a dummy. Oh, by the way, these are two um, the uh, these will both be. These are both used in the body of this function. Um, yeah. So this point is in some sense just an example point. You can see that when I move it around, it's changing stuff that's in the body of the function, um, but it's not changing these various lines that use the function. 
Um, yeah, because in some sense it's just an example, uh, example point, an example of the input that this function is supposed to receive. Okay, um, this uh, this this point is being used in this line. So uh, this point is always at let's uh, what's going to turn out to be the North Pole. Um, I can change my my you know example point again from here, um, and then this line is just being set to the join of these two points. Um, and uh, down here, we've, so we've got this, uh, this uh, plane being defined in this line, and then this function uses this plane. Um, it takes this uh, line that we just created, and then takes the meat of the point of the, the ta it takes the meat of the uh, plane and the line, and gets to this new point. And um, whatever, cur currently, whatever is the last variable defined in the function is assumed to be the return value of this function. But then I've just got these, uh, these uh, all the variables uh, in one line. So, yeah, uh, if I move this point around, you can see that indeed this, uh, yeah, this, this output point is um, whatever that, yeah. <laughs> it's projecting that point down onto the but down down onto here. All right, so and here's some uses of that uh, point. Uh, again, here here we're just giving a different example point, and you see that if I change this point, it's not changing anything in the body of the function. Um, here we got something more interesting. So obviously this is the globe, um, and we're taking the entire globe and we're projecting it down onto that plane, and that gives us indeed the stereographic projection of the globe. Um, and because we're hovering this copy of the globe that is this variable uh, that was defined up there until I erased it, um, I can move that around and we see, you know, updated this thing because um, this this whole function is being uh, compiled to GLSL and then run. Uh, in theory, it sh you should be able to uh, update it and it'll recompile. Um, uh, I, you can see that if I change the if I've changed the projection point, which I'll do in a moment, um, then it it does change what's in here. Um, I was working on uh, the compiler to GLSL, but yeah, anyway. And there is the same thing with Jupiter, looking very uh, very lovely. Um, the Jupiter here is the same um, uh, the same data structure, let's say, as the globe that we've got there. Um, and then here we've got that you can um, give it an array of points and it'll, um, you can give this function the array of points and it'll project the, that array of points down onto uh, the bottom plane. Um, and yeah, oh, by the way, so like whenever I hover something, uh, you know, it creates this sort of darker gray rectangle in order to uh, blot out whatever's behind it. Um, that looks a bit weird in the case of this one because that rectangle is something that's actually in three-dimensional space. The and then the this stuff is drawn on top of that, um, and then like we've got this uh, projected Earth like clipping through that grey rectangle. Um, obviously, that's not a very good-looking thing, but it's hard to figure out what the alternative to it would be. And I do need like I've I've tweaked I tweaked the sizes of these things quite a bit and I'm not completely happy with them but uh, yeah so and then down here um, uh, we've got um, the other stuff but we, we've got another function being defined um, uh, so yeah what to say about this so one thing that might not have been clear all of these variables are named automatically so if I want to create a new variable let's say that I want to create a new line I click here and that creates me a new line and because this is a free line it's, it's a free variable I can modify it as much as I like unlike which is not the same thing as this line which I cannot modify because it's defined by these two planes um, when I create a new variable, it automatically assigns a name. And when I say name, uh, these things are named the color by colors, um, the colors that are the borders of them. And uh, the you, know, you can see that this point is uh, yellow and red. And because it's yellow and red, I can type red yellow. We've got the, those currently as characters. But then if I press the space bar, that turns into another copy of that thing. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, or this, oh, well, might as well do it on the same line. So blue red becomes that line. Um, <laughs> right, and my carrot is being drawn on top of that. Looks a bit weird, but uh, yeah. Um, so obviously this is a solution to the fact that uh, if you've got two lines, do you necessarily, and you're, you've just got a visualization of those two lines, how do you know that this line is this line and that line is that line? Uh, this color thing is a solution to that. Um, yeah, I don't think that that actually, this idea doesn't work particularly well. Um, you know, obviously you run out of colors. That's not the biggest problem. Like I could just make it so that you add more colors. This palette is not particularly, uh, if it's if it's well suited to people with color blindness, then that's by chance. Um, I was just trying to think of a limited set of colors that would be, uh, that I could type with one letter each and it would be unambiguous which color that was. Um, yeah, this doesn't work, I would say, particularly well because if, because you kind of got to think, you t naming things like, you know, uh, current position allows you to think, uh, I was conflicted about this. So like the, the this was meant to be a good idea because uh, maybe in some sense names are a bad idea because if you have like this char so you've got a character in your video game and this character is at this position and then you name something like character position and then you kind of assume that this character position is going to be the same as the wherever the character is on the screen but that can be a little bit misleading in some sense because because what if you've got some bug that makes it so that the character is being drawn in a place that isn't its position? Because, yeah, things can be stateful in weird ways. Maybe you haven't updated that position on the GPU yet. Um, uh, or you've got multiple versions of that variable, potentially for some good reason. Um, uh, so your visualization is different from what your code is telling you. And with this, it's meant to be the case that, yeah, you, you're... There's just there's just no way for that name to mislead you. You always see the visualization, and the visualization is of the data that's actually in there. Um, but uh, in some sense, names are helpful because I kind of sometimes think, oh, was this one red, yellow? Oh, let me scroll up. Like, yeah, I, actually, I don't have scrolling yet because what happened with this project is that I did kind of abandon it about a year ago. This is me uh, having to go back to this thing. Um, yeah, uh, I've got other good ideas for things in here, but I want, I wanted to work on something next that would be something that would be really practically useful. And I don't think that something that is, that requires you to use a new language and a new editor is going to be something that people are really going to use. But I did want to try out these ideas within this environment. Um, one thing that I didn't say here, so... Uh, within an environment where I could try out arbitrary ideas. Um, so here we've got a point and a plane, um, uh, and this is being set to the dual. Um, uh, so if I move this point around, the plane disappears, but that's because it's being, it's like perpendicular to the camera. Um, uh, if I, if I have like, let's get rid of some of these. Um, if I have this one down here, so we've got right now, oh, that's looking pretty bad, but so right now I'm changing the position of this point and it always changes that to, and it always changes the um, uh, the output here immediately. Um, again, because this point is a copy, it is, is the same as this point up here. Um, it might be good if, like, they were all, like, all when you're hovering a variable, all the other copies of it in the editor are, like, highlighted, maybe. Um, like, actually, lots of modern editors do actually have that. Um, yeah. But so, yeah, you, you can see that it's kind of got a combination of... Um, text and these pictograms as well. In some sense, I wanted it to be the case that uh, maybe this, the word stereographic, you could define it with a new pictogram, um, and that pictogram would be 
uh, would be what appears here. Um, uh, obviously, you, it would be named by a colour, and uh, what would be in the stereographic pictogram would be a, a depiction of how the stereographic function works. Maybe a combination of all of these, uh, all of these uh, variables that I've got at the bottom here. Um, but yes, this is not necessarily so. so I spent a long time thinking about what arrays should look like, and I'm still not necessarily satisfied with that. Um, uh, I wanted to have a good system for, let's say, suggestions, and that's the strength of projective geometric algebra. Like, when you're working with geometric... Like, when you have something like this, like, set, so, so I've got this line, and let's say that I want to have a new point... And then I want to set that line equal to something, and yeah, you can see that obviously it's already it's it. This is this this would say a misplaced equal sign, um, uh, because it's compiling this line as soon as I type it, which is sort of a bad idea. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so as soon as it knows that you want a new point, um, it could maybe suggest things based on other stuff that you might put into that line like say that I have like uh, red blue and now I've got this thing and it might immediately say oh do you maybe want to project that point onto here do you maybe want to have uh, the 90 degree turn of this point around this line um, that would and that would automatically create something called a motor from projective geometric algebra um, so yeah, the, uh, what I essentially realized was that, uh, you kind of want to be working in this window quite a lot, like, and so my next version of it, uh, was strongly based on that. Um, but yeah, so I don't expect to go back to this version of it. Probably the next step will be something like, uh, a Unity or 3JS, um, or maybe not not Unreal Engine, but uh, an environment where you can be essentially working within this window, um, define these things, and then uh, press a button that gets it to spit out uh, some 3JS code, or um, a version of three uh, a, a add-on for Visual Studio Code that. Um, gives you stuff like this, like you hover a variable and it immediately shows you the uh, that or something like this. Yeah. Um, though I've not I've not been entirely sure what to move on to, and you'll see that in the next up, update video, which is updates on things that I have previously made. So yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed that.